Photographers are like the sandworms in the movie Dune. When you see one, you think, oh no, I hope I don't get in its way. They eat too much for their own good. They have worm-colored skin. Doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I'd refuse. You're a worm. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Against my better judgment, I am trying to manually focus with the Canon EF 85mm 1.2 because I just filmed this segment with autofocus and the adapter no longer works because I updated the Sony firmware. Oh, why did I do that, you ask? I don't know. So life is over for all of us, and we're going to compare to the Nikon 85mm 1.2 and the new 85 1.8G lens. Ooh, look at that comparison. In 2024, what would you get? Fuji XS20 with the 15 to 45mm. Ah, oh, you ruined my life. I thought you had some class, and you went with that lens. It's plastic and terrible. Or Panasonic S5, body only, $1,000, looking for something hybrid. You're looking for YouTube vlogs in a living room. That's my specialty. I don't care what you say after the specs. Yes, Fuji XS20, that's what I would lean towards. It's some magic. Fuji Touch, I'm looking for one. I want it. But that lens, like, does it have to be that? It's the worst one ever. It has OIS in it. And technically you'd think it's sync stable. Not really. It's not very stable. I've tried that exact combo. It was okay. Very light. You could do worse. Not bad. But could you like forego that and find a used prime somewhere? You could find something. Probably not. But okay. So you go with the Fuji. You get that lens. Not the Panasonic though. You're joking, right? You know the direction Panasonic's heading and it's downward to hell. They're not good. They lie. Get a Nikon camera, and then you can pretend you have a Panasonic, you know what I mean? S5 to, like, it's phase detect only. What are we doing? I mean, not, oh, wow. The only Panasonic cameras you think of getting are the S5 II or the G9 II. Full frame or micro four thirds. Everything before that, your manual focus technology, you're out of the loop. But for me, I would rather have the food personally. You get 240 frames per second autofocus for your living room vlogs. That little lens, tiny and cute, I could vlog with it. Not bad, no pop, zero pop. But then you can one day work your way up towards a prime. You get that 35 mil 1.4 or the Mitocon 33 mil 0.095. Oh, I missed that setup so bad. Flat Earth Santa already gifted us the best gifts. And we sold most of them for rubbish. It's all rubbish. I forgot I was supposed to have glasses on. I have eye aids. Oh, that was untimely of me. So first I want to just see, can Sony autofocus with just a box and no face detect or what the hell happened, man? It's not doing it, is it? There's a face detecting box on the screen and it no longer works. Why did I update that firmware? I was just bored. Oh man, there's so many positives to it. I'm gonna make a full video on it, but ah, oh, damn you. You ruined my life. Let's switch to the Nikon. I was sitting here baffling my mind, wondering like, how come I have to turn the lights down now? What? They're both 1.2. I'm in log. 800 ISO on the Sony, I was allowed to 80 ISO. I said that weird. So, are we seeing a champion so far? Canon or Nikon? A little softer, pleasing touch on the skin tones, someone? Or a little more sharper, clinical, but still very nice. Very nice, Nikon. Was that your question? Why don't you get an S1? Cheap ad shit used. L mount glass, bro. Have you watched nothing that I've done? So did you just arrive in New Delhi off a flight and you're lost? And you're like, what? Should I take a cab? I've had it. I owned it. I made hundreds of videos, at least 30. Had it for a long time. That was one of the first Flatter Santa gifts. No, it wasn't. He, was, he gave me a bunch of Micro Four Third stuff. And then, do you want the S1, buddy? I'm like, okay. Had the Sigma 45mm 2.8. And I was like, hmm, not bad. And I, I loved it. Tried to love it. 
no flippy screen. It was like quite annoying. I had monitors at that time and the autofocus was abysmal, but it had a nice look. I remember the Viltrox 20 mil 1.8. It was a cinema lens, heavy as hell. And it was the best look we've ever got. We could never compete with that today, but I've had it. Why would I get that? No flippy screen. Like we're going back to a seven three territory. I had the Samsung NX1, it was fantastic, but no flippy screen. It's annoying, it's super annoying. Whereas this is actually really annoying too. The more I find I'm doing this with the telephoto glass and I can't see the screen if I'm in focus or not, it's super annoying. So like I should just stick to wide angle. Maybe we'll switch to something, but hot damn, the S1? Like why would you even be recommending that to somebody? It's the oldest thing, phase detect, like the S5 destroys it and then the s5 II, already far less than i want you're recommending me below that tier well who are you what do you why are you wasting all our time go watch the old videos and see why okay let's switch to rich tone portrait to see nikon true color science because what i've found is i've switched to color space transform instead of the official nikon lut for log because that was making a pink face and I'm done with Nikon pink faces. So rich torn portrait, this is what Nikon color science really is. Okay, now we're in rich tone portrait. I experimented a bunch trying to get the ultimate out of camera look for Nikon. I was playing around with sharpness and dynamic range settings and it just, it never looks as good as log, does it? Next to log, it's just something about the skin tones are a little more natural in log. There's zero reason to ever shoot rich tone portrait. Unless you're versus Sony standard versus rich tone portrait. Maybe you have something. I doubt it. Was he in focus? Unlikely. So there we have that. Nikon color science. Not as good as Canon. Oh boy. I'm hunting for a Canon camera. Great video. You don't like Canon EF 35mm first version? For me, it's an amazing lens. What would you do to replace it with? Of course, I love it. What I don't love is the Canon bodies. They're annoying, even though I just said that I'm searching for one and I want one bad. They're so annoying to use. It's just the hard to edit files. I've been over it. We're done with Canon. It's just so annoying, but I wish I had, like I have amazing EF glass that deserves a better camera. But is anything coming that's a normal price and has some fun specs and good slow-mo and you're fixing like white balance custom things? So far, Nikon is far superior to Canon usability wise. Even this photography centric camera is just so much easier to use and it's just so annoying using a Canon. Sony much rather use one of those with all its custom buttons and stuff. Canon, yeah, that lens though, it was phenomenal. I just Personally, I don't love 35 mil in here. Mostly I just, I can't find the sweet spot for whatever reason, like what's in the background, like this right now, stupid lamps over here, maybe part of a curtain. It's a nightmare, this studio, but like whatever, man, we're trying our best. But when I put a 35 over there in the background, it's like part of that shelf and some of that mirror. And it's just kind of awkward and it never works. It just never works. Plus I already have the best 35 ever made, the Voigtlander 35mm 1.2. So if I ever need that focal length, I have the best one. And so like even, even with saying all that, I would like to have that Zeiss 35mm Tony 2 just to see what it's like, but that would be dumb. I might buy. Okay, let us switch to the 85mm 1.8 G lens, much cheaper, more than 10 times cheaper. You know what I should be doing? I keep, whenever I change lenses, like 1.2 to 1.8, I change the lighting to compensate, to get things exposed properly. I should have an ND filter on here and then we're exposing with that or shutter like a pro. 85 mil 1.8, we stuck in rich tone portrait versus 85 1.2. I have seen outside that the 85 1.2 is better it's like, I don't know that I'm seeing any pop on this one. This was a dumb purchase. And the guy, it has like terrible dust and strange markings on the element. And I was like, damn you to hell. Like 
If I wasn't so impatient, like I drove all the way there on a scooter with all my gear with the 85mm and then as soon as I bought it I was going to go film and I did do that. If I didn't have that in mind I wouldn't have bought the lens in that condition. The guy said it was perfect quality and it's like, man, slimy people, I hate them so much. I always list the flaws in my ads and it maybe takes a while to sell it if it's a little, my Zeiss had the huge gash in the element. Like I took a picture of it and like, here it is. It doesn't even show up in the pictures, come on. Someone eventually bought it. Like always, you gotta be honest. God's watching, he's watching. Why don't you have an S5 II or an X-H2S? Wow, another man doesn't watch the show. Doesn't even watch. I sold my R8 because the overheating thing was so annoying. Mine never overheated. What are you even doing? 4K 60 for 35 minutes, look at overheated, bro. The only annoying thing was when you switch to 4K 60, it shows you a big warning, it might overheat. Mine never did, although I never really filmed in 4K 60 because it sucked. It was hard to edit. So here's the deal. I reviewed the S5 II. It was good for what it was, but it's a lower tiered camera than my A7S III. We already have 4K 120 HD 240 with perfect autofocus. We're waiting for someone to beat it. Will anyone ever beat it? No. S5 II is an A7 IV competitor, much lower. 4K 60 with a carp. What did I say there? With a carp. With a carp. With a cop. I'm not looking to go backwards in life. This Nikon ZF, same tier, but it was a gift, a Steinbeck gift. And having used it for just this, it is nice. It's better than my Sony. Like just the colors look nice. Sometimes Sony looks good, admit it. But like, if I could only have one camera, it wouldn't be this one, because I have no slow-mo in the damn thing. It's a terrible slow-mo. The Fuji X-H2S, it's like A7S III territory with the specs. So like they matched it and even like a better look on paper. Yes, that's why I bought it. I bought it almost brand new, a slight discount from Aiden Camera. Wow, haven't heard from them in a while. Where's all my gear? Hey, test this, test whatever you want. I never get anything. So while the X-H2S was fantastic at some things, I found the IBIS to be more jerky than the X-T4 was and the 240 frames per second got much worse. The noise was disgusting and it was an extra crop. I don't understand, no one's ever explained. They're both 26 megapixel sensors. The X-T4 crops 29% in 240p. The X-H2S, 38%. No one's ever explained why it's an extra crop and it looks much worse. So I don't know why that happened. It's a stacked sensor. It should be able to do it faster with less crops or more frames. So I don't get it. So, and that left-handed dial. If I'm doing wildlife and I got to reach over like a monkey to turn that dial, that's why I'm looking XH20, XS20, or ideally XS2, the pro version of the XS20. Might make a video on that soon. It doesn't exist. Okay, for the last question, let's switch to the only Nikon lens worth its weight in gold. My God. Underrated lens. Sure, I said it's worth its weight in gold and it's the lightest lens on earth. You didn't see that coming. Oh, the speed bumps. 40 mil Tony two. Still in rich tone portrait for some reason. Should have switched out of that a long time ago, whatever. It's a decent lens. It's a tough one to even think of parting with. It's like, it's so light and cheap and still some decent look. It's not like clinically sharp, like the Z85 1.2. It's decent stuff. Wow, what happened to Canon autofocus after the 80D? Never used to be this bad at detecting faces. It's really bad. I've always said that. People are like dual pixel autofocus. When I was deciding to get the G85, the 80D was on the menu. And I tried it in the shop once and I was like, oh, look at that dual pixel. Like, sure, it works sometimes. And you're in and out and it's like, oh, wow, that's so much better than Panasonic. But in the field, in real life, it hunts. I had the M50, it hunted, the R5, the R6, the R8. Every single one of them hunts at some point. You can't just be a monkey goof going back and forth in your living room. 
you have to go out in the real world and when you're vlogging you're like on a tripod talking to a mountain it hunts canon also has a subject detect only mode so does nikon i turned it off because it for some reason it just doesn't acquire you initially like once it has you it's okay it has lost me times like doing that and then it'll flip to something i'm like what did you detect i'm the only subject i'm a human boy so like nikon too it's like if i i have that mode on it won't pick me up it's like pick me up for a date once drive get me a milkshake so it's like canon autofocus like that's why i sold the r8 one last time i was out there making a tutorial on how this looks better doesn't it and i was out of focus and i'm like what are you even doing it's so ghetto and then my sony betrayed me so this partly the lens but like you have to go native rf glass maybe it's more reliable but then what do you clinical nightmares or budget hobo shit nikon is the sweet spot once you tweak the settings it shouldn't lose you and it doesn't it's just Annoying to initially acquire yourself. I have to sneak around and get super close to the camera, make sure it has my face and then slowly back away sometimes. And it's like, that's on the telephoto glass. If I just had kept with the 40 mil, I can see it all. And it just gets me, and I don't know my obsession with these telephoto lenses. I want to get the Zeiss 135 Tony two for this thing. It's like, wow, why am I doing this to myself? I don't know. I'll tell you why, because we started out with that guy, Sony, with an 85mm Canon. Was he in focus? Maybe for 14 seconds. I manually focused it. Oh my god. Standard colored versus rich tone? Are you joking? Then we switched it on over to the 85Z lens. Wow, much better. In log. Can you see the skin tone difference? Log versus rich tone? Oh no. Then we switched into the 85mm. No, we didn't. We switched into rich tone portrait on the 1.2 lens. Now we have that, telephoto verse not so much, half the focal length, uh oh. Then we switch to the 85mm 1.8, older lens. These are similarly priced now. You get, mine was 250 Canadian. I should have gave him $100 and kicked him in the sack while he was at it. I can't believe that guy ripped me off. I was in such a fiendish mode to make videos. I was like, I don't even care what the quality's like. Because I know the front element can be a disaster and you're not even going to see it. So it's like, all right, whatever. And now we're here. We're now. We're Nikon forever. So I just heard the Z6 III is on its way. It might already be out by the time this video is out. And maybe I've already given my impressions of it. Even though I don't have it. How can you give it a review? You never touched the camera. I'll touch your mom. I'll leave. How you doing? I helped you. Subscribe for more videos. See you